Well, Chantel, as you can see, the pumps have been quite busy today, but some of the drivers I spoke with weren't aware the price of gas is set to go up tomorrow. They told me it's concerning, but it will be hard to avoid. It was a chaotic morning in the Evergreen neighborhood. A moose broke through this glass window in the community entrance of Sylvia Fedoruk and St. Nicholas Catholic School. The moose entered a room with children inside, believed to be taking part in a before and after school program. Saskatoon police received a call about the incident just before nine this morning and responded along with officers from the Ministry of Environment. An inspector with the Conservation Office says the children were removed safely, some climbing through the window the moose crashed through. The author of a ballistics report filed by the Crown in the Greg Furtuck murder trial says he was not aware of what gun Furtuck confessed to using in the alleged crime in an undercover police tactic. Chantel, the sign was found this morning on a bridge on the Muscaday First Nation. It is being called unacceptable, disturbing and traumatizing to members of the community. The sign says in part, quote, white lives matter too. Who else is going to work and pay taxes? End quote. Ava Bear, the chief of Muscaday First Nation, says no one has ever disputed that all lives matter. She also says First Nations people contribute a lot in tax dollars to the province and to the country. A pair of shoes were also hung over the sign, something Bear calls a mockery of what shoes have come to symbolize in recent weeks. The bridge was the site of a memorial put up last month where shoes were hung to honor the unmarked graves found at residential school sites across Canada. The John Howard Society has a reintegration program and some housing supports for inmates when they're released, but says it's still not enough. A spokesperson says there needs to be more supports available. A lot of people are working from home and that includes me. So I've decided to try an experiment. I've got some rubber gloves on and I've got this red syrup to see just how far germs can spread even in your own home. Let's get to work. This drive through is one of the new ways Delish by Tish is doing business. People can order on the go or ahead and then ring this doorbell to get their orders brought out to them. That's right, Chantel. It's been an emotional day for people who live in the building known as Prairie Heights. It's a lot quieter here now than it was this morning. As you can see behind me, fencing has been put up around most of the building and will remain there until the deficiencies have been fixed. We did speak to two residents who own units in the building and say they're devastated by the closure. I got my life savings in here. And it comes to this. Norbert Kaninsky is a longtime resident and condo owner at Prairie Heights. He found out Thursday morning that his building is being shut down by the Saskatoon Fire Department as it is no longer safe to live in. Mr. Charlie Clark, where are you? We could use your help. We, we're left high and dry. You're helping everybody else, but not us. I, I don't ask for much. The fire department says it has spent the last several months trying to ensure the building is safe, clean and not a fire hazard, but that it can no longer allow people to live in the building until significant changes are made. A water leak was discovered in the latest inspection of the building and is beginning to seep through drywall and is leaking into the elevator and collecting in the elevator shaft. Assistant Fire Chief Yvonne Raymer says the water had to be shut off. So at this point, it's no longer feasible due to the number of residents uh, affected to continue to do the work and then invoice back to the condo owners. So far this year, the fire department has responded to the building 45 times while police have gone 131 times. Inspectors have found suites with no water, sewer waste backup and other damage. Violent confrontations have also been caught on the building's security camera footage. I said a guy got murdered back here, murdered in 410, stabbed out here. We put up with fires. Last month, the fire department issued an invoice to property owners for nearly $60,000 for repairs completed by various companies. Of the 44 units in the building, 14 are affected by Thursday's closure. The remaining 30 suites are already boarded up and vacant. It's always harsh whenever we have to make the heavy decision to close a building. It doesn't come without empathy or a difficult decision. The Ministry of Social Services and its community partners were on site to help tenants who needed food and and shelter. It's broken my life here. I'm missing my money. I want a compensation. Compensation. City can pay for me. Compensation. About life like that. I'm like garbage dog here. Raymer says the city is not in a position to offer compensation to condo owners and that they've provided every service to the best of its ability. 
The fire department says the rehousing is only temporary because the elevator is not working. Residents will be given a chance at a later date to collect the rest of their belongings. The timeline as to when the building can reopen will all depend on condo, condo owners and how fast they can get contractors out to get the work done. Sean Chantel. All right, thanks, Nicole. Nicole D. Donato reporting live for us tonight. Blossom de Bruin never expected her trip to the Sutherland Beach off-leash dog park to end the way it did. Shortly after 4.30 Tuesday afternoon, her 12-year-old terrier mix, Jax, was attacked by two large dogs. He's my best friend. We do everything together. He's come everywhere with me and just felt so bad that I couldn't protect him. The final year U of S veterinary student says one of the dogs picked Jacks up by the stomach, causing his intestines to come out. And I just screamed like I just lost it. I couldn't believe like seeing my dog eviscerated basically right in front of me. De Bruin says others at the dog park helped her get the dogs off of him, but their owner was not around. She immediately brought Jax to the emergency clinic at the U of S where he had to be rushed into surgery and had a 50% chance of survival. His injuries turned out to be more severe and he went into cardiac arrest on the table and died soon after. I was horrified when I heard like it looked already so bad and it was so much worse like they just tore him right apart. The sign at the dog park where Jax was attacked suggests owners control their dogs and keep them in sight as well as carry a leash at all times. But one dog trainer we spoke to says all dog owners need to be prepared when they visit a dog park. Anybody can take their dog to a dog park, right? It doesn't matter whether or not your dog has bit somebody or maybe is aggressive towards another dog. You can still take them. There's just no um, telling what you're going to run into. The city of Saskatoon also recommends Pet owners ensure their dogs are well behaved around people and pets and can obey basic commands of come, sit and stay before going to a dog park. Saskatoon's Animal Control Agency is now investigating the incident. While nothing can bring Jax back, De Bruin hopes her experience encourages owners to take extra precautions. I would never want anyone else to have to see what I had to see and, and go through that. So. I think, like, I don't blame the, the dogs, I don't blame the breed. I think dog behavior has a lot more to do with training than it does with genetics. Nicole DiDonato, CTV News, Saskatoon.